Good morning, fans of the new network. It is James Ernest of Sarah's Playlist. We are so excited to have Paige King Johnson on today, and we're going to be talking about her new single, I Thank God. Paige, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's good to see you. Oh, gosh, yeah, it's great having you on the show. We are excited. Uh, we want to know more about how you got started. I understand at age nine that you were in uh, impersonating Loretta Lynn, Patsy Cline, Waylon Jennings, and Merle Haggard. Yes, I was. I always say I was the little kid that just liked attention in whatever form or fashion it came in. Um, but I just enjoyed being able to perform and I was raised on classic country music. And so, uh, you know, that was the things that I gravitated towards naturally was just uh, trying to learn those songs. And, and those were the first songs that I kind of ever learned to play on guitar and ever played out in public. It looks like your parents made a good investment by putting you and your sister into formal music uh, lessons. When you become a parent down the road, uh, do you plan on putting your children into music lessons? 100%. I mean, Lord willing, I think that there is so much value that comes out of music. And even if I hadn't, you know, taken it and done this as a career down the road, um, there's so much to be learned, you know, in character building and everything in music lessons in general. And, you know, they always say that musicians are the smartest people because we use our left and our right brains mm -hmm. at the same time. So, and I believe them. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, uh, music is a lot of math that people don't give it credit for. So, yeah, I mean, it definitely, it, it helps a person become well-rounded. Absolutely. How did uh, a Christmas present from your Paul Paul change your life? Uh, 100%. I mean, it, I, my life would not be the same without it. And uh, when I was 10 years old, my papa gave me a guitar for Christmas. And uh, I've been doing some piano lessons to begin with. And um, I really enjoyed music. And my whole family, especially my papa, really saw how much I uh enjoyed music and how much joy it brought me and um and so he gifted me a guitar that christmas and really kind of pushed me to start taking guitar lessons and if it weren't for that i probably i may not be here today so i am completely indebted to him <laughs> not all musicians have the formal training like you have you went to belmont university what did you learn from your time there about the music business a lot um and and i learned that i didn't know anything <laughs> mainly <laughs> but uh there was a lot to be learned in the music business program you know by way of a what do all the facets of the industry look like and where can you make money and make a business out of this and all the things but also um it was important to me to get that education because it taught me you know, what are you owed as an artist and how do you look out for yourself and, you know, how do you build your team around you and all the things that, you know, I don't think that you get when you just kind of jump right into it. So um, Belmont was great for kind of laying the groundwork. It didn't teach me everything. You learn a lot by just doing, you know, oh, definitely. things yeah. in and out. But. Mm. <laughs> yeah, actually being in the industry is, right. oh my gosh, yeah, it's such, a, uh, such an eye-opening experience. Absolutely. And then with that, as a songwriter, when did you find your uh, voice? It really wasn't until I moved to Nashville that I started writing songs. I was, uh, you know, singing all my favorite cover songs up until then and learning about songwriting, even though I didn't think I was learning about it. But it wasn't until I moved to Nashville and moved away from home for the first time and kind of started figuring out my own little grown up struggles and um that was really when I started sitting down and and honestly more so just finding the courage to sit down and, and start writing my own songs. What were some of those favorite cover songs? Oh gosh. One that still to this day gets held over my head is Red High Heels by Kelly Pickler. <laughs> um and not a, a very famous song, but me being a North Carolina girl and right when I started uh, playing music, Kelly Pickler was on American Idol and was mm -hmm. going through everything. And I just remember like that was the epitome of what I wanted to be. And I played red high heels until I was blue in the face. <laughs> awesome. And when you're writing, why is it important to put personal feelings and life experiences into that? I mean, if you don't, then I think people can tell it, right? Um, 
you know, music is meant to be a healing thing and something that bonds us together through, you know, both having experienced whatever it is that the song is singing about, whether it's good, bad, ugly, whatever. Um, and so I think when you walk into a writing room, if there isn't heart behind it or experience behind it or just passion for whatever it is that you're writing about, I think it's really easy for the listener to hear that um, in the song that, you know, it feels a little empty. And so, um, you know, I, I don't ever really write songs that I don't believe in the message or believe in the story because, um, you know, if you aren't, then it's just kind of a little bit of a waste, I feel like. <laughs> I understand recently you came up with a new writing process, uh, co-writing. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, co-writing is, you know, something that I've learned. I had to learn very quickly when I moved to Nashville. You know, this is how the town works. This is how the industry works. And, um, you know, I've really appreciated, A, being able to meet some of my best friends through co-writing and just kind of sharing ideas between that. But also it's made me a better writer. Um, and I tell people all the time that when they're getting into writing, that writing by yourself is good to, to get ideas stirring, but you become such a better writer when you do sit down in a room and you get to um, what they call writing up in Nashville, write with people that are better than you and that have more experience than you. And you'll be able to learn so much more that way. Oh, definitely. I mean, having someone to, uh, to bounce the ideals off of and just just to see their uh, responses i mean that definitely has got to be a huge help mm -hmm. 100%. now rather than making your fans cry or laugh or dance how are you able to connect with them on such a strong level i love people um and i love being in front of people that's really honestly probably why i love this job so much is because it does put me in front of a lot of different people every night and um especially when COVID hit and we had all the lockdowns, I really appreciated my job and the interactions that I get so much more because I wasn't able to have those for a really long time. And um, I, you can release music all you want to, but you don't really get that gratification of, okay, I did make something that matters until you get to sing that in front of a crowd and see people crying or see people getting up and dancing and all the things. Um, and that's, you know, that's the most rewarding part of this job is being able to see the impact that those stories that you, you know, spent so many hours crafting, how they're hitting people's hearts. And so that's really important to me. Oh, definitely. I mean, you can see those numbers all day about how your views keep going up and up and up, but you're right mm -hmm. until you're actually there until you're actually with them and experience it live. I mean, it makes such a huge difference. 100%. So despite now being in the big city, how have you been able to maintain that down-home attitude? Well, thankfully, I kind of get to split my time between Nashville and my home state of North Carolina, which is honestly the best of all worlds, um, because I was raised on a farm in North Carolina. And when I lived in Nashville full-time, when I was going to school, um, it was good. I mean, I loved it, but there was definitely parts of me I felt like were, were missing out because I was missing that freedom of being in wide open spaces and, and being able to saddle up a horse and go ride whenever I wanted to. And so now I truly am living the best of both worlds by being able to split my time and appreciate both places and have two places to miss, which is nice. <laughs> I apologize because this is going to be a reference to something before your time, but I'm going to ask anyway. Um, you mentioned North Carolina, and anytime someone says North Carolina, I um, think of this. There was a song uh, back in the day, P.D. Pablo, uh, about oh, yeah. mm -hmm. twisting around yeah. your head like a helicopter. Mm -hmm. Do people in North Carolina actually twist things around their head like a helicopter? <laughs> I don't really think so. Not that I'm aware of, but maybe we should start, honestly. <laughs> maybe P.D. Pablo was on to something. <laughs> yeah, because I grew up listening to the song and I always thought ah, that would be fun to go to Carolina. Apparently at their parties, they have to give space so they don't yeah. hit each other with towels and shirts and other types of cloths. But yeah, that that always kind of was my imp impression of Carolina that I always thought, well, I guess they do that. That sounds like yeah. uh, an interesting party trick. Maybe that's just in the colleges. And since I didn't go to college in North Carolina, maybe I missed out on all of that. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> of your many awards, which has meant the most to you? 
Uh, I hate this question because they all mean a lot to me. Um, but recently I was awarded the Carolina Country Music Songwriter of the Year Award. And that one really, I think, hit home the most because I tell people a lot that, you know, you can be taught how to be a good singer or be taught how to be a good entertainer, but songwriting really honestly just like comes from your heart to begin with. And you can learn obviously things about songwriting along the way, but it's such a personal thing and to receive, um, you know, a head nod from my peers that of the hard work that I've been putting into writing for years and years, um, that really meant a lot because I've, you know, been trying to hone that craft and still, you know, have plenty of ways to go to get better and better. But, um, you know, that one really means a lot. I know it's not like a typical award, but I can imagine this one also meant a lot to you being the first ever got to be NC music ambassador. I mean, to be a music ambassador, uh, hopefully you got diplomatic immunity from it, but you know, who knows on that, but yeah, tell us about that experience. It was amazing. Uh, when I moved to Nashville, I kind of felt like I was leaving behind a whole part of me because I was raised on a horse farm and I was an FFA kid and a 4-H kid. And, um, you know, whenever I kind of left that behind to start pursuing music, I felt like I was doing a disservice to myself. And so to have been approached by the Department of Agriculture and for them to kind of present this opportunity for me to marry my love for music with my love for agriculture and find a space where both of those are kind of helping the other at the same time. Um, it really was a dream come true. And I got to spend a year and a half traveling around my home state of North Carolina and visiting with different students all over the state. Aww. Um, and I got to tell them about my experience in both agriculture and music and hopefully, you know, inspire some of them to go down one road or the other or kind of be like me and try to find a way to kind of meld the two together. And um, it was a really rewarding thing for me, too, because both of those things are so important to me and close to my heart. So uh, it's something I will never, ever take for granted. <laughs> so it sounds like your time in the FFA or 4-H were both very uh, influential on you, but they also help you to connect with your fans because they also have those uh, experiences. Absolutely. I mean, there is nothing like a group of FFA kids who will sit around and listen to you play country songs all day long. And those are my kind of people. So I enjoy it so much. <laughs> oh, awesome. An amazing uh, debut uh, whiskey and or water down the whiskey how great did it feel to watch it climb oh so crazy uh water down the whiskey was my first single to country radio and so i was a newbie i had no clue what to experience uh you know didn't know what to expect when it was coming at me how fast anything would happen if anybody would play a song whatsoever and so to see that response um and to be able to go out on radio tour was just an incredible thing and uh, kind of set the bar pretty high for the first one out of the shoot, but it was <laughs> it was uh, it was a lot of fun and it taught me a lot and uh, you know kind of laid the groundwork for me to have some amazing relationships with radio people and uh, people all over Nashville. Nice. Now the problem was I didn't do the research on this question. I should have done the research and checked to make sure that you're over 21 before asking you this question. I am. <laughs> okay. Cause I was going to say, shoot, uh, with some of you young ladies, it's hard to tell, uh, ages and all, but, uh, what is your favorite type of whiskey? You know what? I'm the biggest imposter when it comes to that song, because I do not drink whiskey, not one bit. I am more of a wine girl. So, um, the best whiskey I've ever had was none. <laughs> but give me a glass of Cabernet and I'm there. <laughs> nice. So in other words, when you're going to the bourbon and beyond festivals and things like that, you're uh, not sampling all the different beverages. Yeah, I'm definitely sticking out like a sore thumb for sure. <laughs> uh, that's okay. I was going to say, I don't drink at all. So for me, shoot, I don't have none of that interest. But I uh, love the music, though, at those events. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. And then how have fans responded to your debut album, Honky Tonk Heart? Uh, incredibly. I uh, That was another thing that I was really kind of just going into it blind because it was my first album that I had ever put out. And 
there was a lot of excitement for me, but I was hoping that it would also be received the same way. And I just, I have some of the best, I hate to say fans, that word just feels kind of cringy, but fans and friends and family that support me and listen to me. And um, they really just showed up for me in that album and have been such, such like huge cheerleaders for me. And um, I've reached a lot of new people through the songs on that album. And it's fun to kind of hear different people's stories of how they connect to different songs and, um, you know, get to see their reactions from it. Well, I was going to say, speaking of a, a story about people connecting, I uh, I really feel a strong connection. It's my favorite one. The uh, Why God Made Small Towns. Do you ever miss your uh, hometown? All the time. Um, and so that's kind of where I said it's been really nice to kind of have this double life, a Hannah Montana life, if you will, <laughs> of uh, being able to split time between the two. And when I was in Nashville full time, I missed it so, so much. Um, and not just the town, but the people in it, because the people in it are what makes a place anyways. And so, um, you know, it has been really nice to kind of be able to spend some time back in North Carolina and around those people and get me, you know, back to my roots, which is really important to me as well. Definitely. But I have a feeling we don't have to worry about you going crazy at a Chuck E. Cheese. So I'm, I'm like her. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't seem to be a problem for you. No, we'll be good. <laughs> awesome. Uh, one of the things I love is when artists care about their fans. And like you said, that might not be the right word for them because obviously they mean more to you than that. But I love how you, when you sign a, a, or when you sell a CD, you offer to sign the CD on your website. Why do you do that? Uh, a, you know, if somebody is willing to spend their hard earned money on something that I've made, that means so much to me. And if me taking the extra five seconds to sign my name on it means, you know, that much more to them, then I'm more than happy to do it. But B, you know, because music is such a bonding thing, um, I think adding that personalization to it really mm -hmm. does make them more likely to want to continue reaching for it and listening to it. And that turns into, you know, further support, which I'm always so, so grateful for. Um, and it, you know, kind of creates that friendship between two people that may have never even met before. And I just, I love how my job lets me do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. It is amazing. You're, like you said, how music connects us, how it uh, unites us and, and can change and, and help people for the better. And that's the thing I love about covering music. Now, in, in music, I understand you have two main goals that you're trying to achieve. What are those two goals? Well, I've said from day one that I always want to keep my music authentically me and authentically country. Um, and if I'm able to do that, then I'm being successful in music and whatever I'm doing. And both of those are so important to me because I was raised up on classic country music and I love the heart and the soul and the storytelling that comes from that era of music. And I try my best to kind of infuse that into mine and also making sure that I'm staying true to myself and my values. And, um, you know, I always say, as long as I'm making Jesus and my grandma happy, then mm -hmm. I'm doing good. <laughs> And uh, so, you know, that's what I keep in mind every day I go into the writing room or into the studio or step on stage is, um, you know, trying to keep those two things in mind. Yep. Those are two very important people to keep happy. So I agree with that 100%. <laughs> but yeah, it sounds like uh, there's a lot of great stuff that you have going on in 2024. Any other things that you want to share with us before we let you go? Well, just I always appreciate support and uh, all of my tour dates and merch and everything is on my website. So you can keep up with me there. And uh, we just released a music video. and We have more new music coming this year. So always keep a listen out for it. Oh, and then hey, I almost forgot social media and the web. We're on social yeah. media and all that. Yeah. So my website is pagekingjohnson.com. And uh, on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, all the places um, at Paige King Johnson. So pretty easy to find me. That is awesome. Well, Paige, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'll see you soon.